come on. None of you are surprised, really, by what we've just seen, surely. That was terrible, but not massively unexpected. Not even after the West Ham game and the AC Milan game. Not when you saw that starting eleven. Not when you saw that Bruno Fernandes wasn't playing. And not when you saw how United played in that game. Abysmal defending. Abysmal possession in our own half. Abysmal in midfield. Mason Greenwood's moment of quality there. The only real moment of quality over the full 90 minutes from United there. We're out the FA Cup. 3-1 defeat there to Leicester. Lost our away record. That doesn't really matter. But that was terrible today from United. And for me, it there's so many things you could talk about. Fred had an absolutely horrendous individual game. United's whole team. What We must have given the ball to Leicester directly 15 times or so with just poor passes that were unchallenged. But today highlights the single biggest problem I have with this Manchester United team that I will continue to say until we sign a defensive midfielder, man. We played what looked like a, a diamond. Matic was more holding on his own. Fred was given a bit more freedom to move around. Basically be scrappy do in the middle of the pitch. And he was just, he was shit. Uh, and Matic is just not good enough to hold that position on his own. And the first goal was obviously all about Fred's terrible pass. But also at the same time, for me, it's about Maguire putting him into the position there. He, he was surrounded by two players, Maguire. Just use your noggin and pass it somewhere else. You don't need to... Maguire shouldn't have put him in that situation. Fred shouldn't have balls up the pass when he was in that situation. But it shouldn't have happened. And just United today, the only moment of quality there came from... Pogba's pass across the goal, Van der Beek's dummy, whether that was from Greenwood shouting or Van der Beek's awareness, and a smart finish for Greenwood. It's a shame for him that that means nothing, but it's a good thing that Greenwood got the goal. He's in England's under-21 squad. Come on, Mason, just use that as a platform to continue, because he's been playing very well recently. But United in that second half, nothing changed at all. And that second goal sums up exactly why we need a top-class defensive midfielder. It's the single most important signing we can make this summer. Matic getting taken out of the game with a quick one-two. Yuri Tillemans just strolling, strolling up to the edge of the box. Fred's like, well, I might tackle you. I'm not sure about it. Nah. 2-1 Leicester. And United didn't get in the game. Even Solskjaer making four subs. Life without Bruno Fernandes is quite a sad and bleak place when it comes to watching United, isn't it? It's terrible. Van der Beek, he was, it feels like we killed Van der Beek, really. Every time he had the ball in, in Ajax, he would knock it around the corner or just a quick putt. He turns around, he plays it sideways or backwards. Either he hasn't got the confidence or that's based on an instruction he's been told. But Van der Beek there didn't do much today. Uh, but no one did, so I'm not going to use this to try and slate him. But until United sign a true defensive midfielder, we are always going to be playing Fred and McTominay in midfield. It's the only midfield, central midfield partnership that really works. Popper plays further up, but I don't really like seeing Popper playing deeper in a midfield two, personally anyway. You might, but I don't. I'd rather see him play further up the pitch. And until we sign that proper defensive midfielder, we cannot trust anybody in that team to play that defensive midfield, midfield role. So, sorry, <laughs> lost my voice. We cannot trust anybody to play that defensive midfield role on their own. You can't trust Matic. McTominay's not a defensive midfielder. Fred certainly isn't a defensive midfielder. Popper is not a defensive midfielder, and neither Bruno or Donny van der Beek. We have no world-class defensive midfielder. And until we get one, we are going to continue having these problems. I've said it so often, and today was just the perfect example of why I've been banging that drum. Because the only time it really works there is when Freddie McTominay are having a blinding performance together. But it's because you need both of them together to do the job that one top-class defensive midfielder could do on his own. And marshal that... Because I think the diamond suits this United team most. But it doesn't suit it until we have a proper defensive midfielder. Tactically, I think maybe we got it wrong today. Brendan Rodgers, I think they targeted Maguire and it worked. I think AC Milan might have targeted Lindelof. But Maguire was poor today. Maguire was very poor. And after Maguire and Lindelof played so well against... Well, and uh, what We conceded one goal in the last hour of me. About 700 minutes. Got unless they have three. Why not have a set piece? Scott McTominay deciding to completely miss the ball. Billy <laughs> Natcher at the back post. Henderson is probably now going to get... Would he get dropped for the next game because he conceded three by... By the going to Solskjaer? I'll be harsh. I don't think he was really at fault for much of... Or any of it, really. But 
until we have that defensive midfielder, we, we have to rely on Freddie McTominay to protect our centre-backs. And when we don't do that and we try and play something else like we did today, you're going to get exposed. And we get exposed every single time we do it. And having two defensive midfielders is holding us back from taking that step up towards where City and Liverpool, maybe not Liverpool this season, but where City are anyway. And it's just going to keep repeating and repeating and repeating. So as much as we could do with a new centre-back this summer or a new right-sided forward or a new centre-forward, we need a defensive midfielder first and foremost. That's my own opinion. You might disagree with that, but I think you're bonkers if you do. Because today, watching that game there, it just highlights the real weaknesses that United have. And it's a real shame because I said, look, imagine we can beat West Ham, go nine points clear of fifth, beat AC Milan, get to the Europa quarters, and then beat Leicester, get to a semi against Southampton, by the way. No. So we fucked that. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, does he need a trophy this season? Let me know what you think about that in the comments. But it, can, it would certainly make a difference because there's been progress in some areas, two steps back in other areas, and that will continue at United. But for me, that game there, there's so many individual moments and, and you can get angry, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just, overall, it just highlights the point I've been saying so often, man. We won't really, truly move forward as a proper footballing team until we have a defensive midfielder because we have to make up for not having that defensive midfielder by playing two players there. And when we don't play two players there, like we did there against Leicester, we get opened up easily because Matic can't play that role anymore. He's too old for it. It's as simple as that. And when a problem is that simple and the solution is so obvious, that's when it starts to get annoying as a United fan. I mean, the solution is simple in the idea that we need to go out and sign one. Maybe it's not as simple in the idea of who. I don't know. But today was... It was the end of a, of, a, of a testing few weeks for United where we really struggled. We really just lacked real tempo for so many games. But we came through it in the Premier League with West Ham. We came through it in the Europa League against AC Milan. We didn't come through it in the FA Cup. And if I'm choosing two of the three, I probably would choose those two. I've wanted three of the three, but we didn't get three. United was shit today. Leicester deserved the win. Questions will be asked, but come on, man. Use that game as the example of why we need a defensive midfielder. It's, it's abundantly obvious how much it's going to change the shape of our team. Let me know what you think about that game in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. For two weeks without football... Yes, please.